Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more Microsoft Flight Simulator. And tonight, we're going to show off Milviz's next offering. Yes, yes, yes. I was waiting for this one, and I'm really glad that they brought it to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the Pilatus PC-6 Porter. And the first thing that I can tell you about this aircraft is it's being released in two phases or stages. We are at phase one as of right now. In fact, we actually just had an update to the aircraft that just went live. So if you did purchase this uh, PC-6 Porter, you may want to head over to the Milviz uh, page or check your email and you should have a link to download the latest update. The update number is currently on the bottom of your screen. So that's what you need to look for. All right, so PC-6, of course, we know it's made by Pilatus and it is probably one of the more famous uh, aircraft when it comes to stall or short takeoff or landing. As you can see, we have two versions that comes with this and both of them have glass cockpits now it's important to note that because in the next phase we should also get steam gauges because i know a lot of you out there including myself do enjoy the steam gauges i personally don't have a problem with glass cockpit i've flown a cessna that has a glass cockpit and i really didn't have any issues with it but i know some of you out there are kind of particular about this sort of thing but suffice to say, they did pack it in with a lot of features. And one of which is the fact that you either have regular tires or Tundra tires. And in addition to that, you also get the option of skis, which I'll go over that once we get into the cockpit and discuss the little iPad that this thing comes with. So for today's flight, we're going to be using the regular old tired Porter. As you can see, cruise speed, 115 knots, thereabouts. Max altitude of uh, just shy of 27,000 feet. We're going to be traveling at around 10,000 feet. We've got an endurance of eight hours, especially with the little drop tanks that we will have on the wings and a range of about 870 nautical miles. As far as liveries go, we do have a plenty of liveries. So as you can see on your screen, we've got, what, about eight, nine, ten liveries that come with this thing. And I believe the other version, Tundra Tire, does have the same amount of liveries. I haven't checked it, but we can assume they probably do, because usually Milvis is pretty thorough with all that stuff. If you recall uh, my X-Plane episode on the Porter way back when, where I used the Thranda version of it. Now, a lot of people don't know, but Thranda is um, behind a lot of the ports that were brought into X-Plane. They are the masters when it comes to modeling for X-Plane. So I have a funny feeling that um, they may have had something to do with Milvis at some point in time bringing the Thranda porter to explain which is absolutely incredible and amazing we will not be using this livery for this flight we're going to instead use this one because i like this one it's just funky and you know me i love my funky liveries all right let's go to weight and balance so as you can see it automatically slaps us in at 50 percent on all tanks for this route, since we're going uh, halfway across the island, and you'll have to forgive me because I've forgotten the name of the island. It's either Flores or something like that, but it'll pop up below, as always. We're going to set it to 85%. And for our call sign today, even though we've got our trusty uh, registration number, we're going to go by Bell Geode 70 because I love it when Microsoft Flight Simulator pronounces my name correctly. That's just awesome. That is just awesome. All right, so where are we flying today? I thought about Papua New Guinea, but you know what? I've flown Papua New Guinea so many times. Granted, I haven't really shown it much in official videos on the channel, but I kind of wanted to go someplace a little different, but somewhat close. So we are in Indonesia. As you can see, we've got the whole chain of islands there. There's Bali right there. And what is that? Juanda or Juanda? I don't even know how to pronounce that. I'm going to butcher all these names, as always. So this is the island that we're going to. And this island is famous because it has Komodo. Komodo is our destination. So Whiskey Alpha Tango Oscar. That is Komodo Airport. And that is brought to us 
by Aerosoft. So I'm going to be showing that off at the end of the video once we actually make it safely. But we're going to be starting out here at uh, Whiskey Alpha Tango Echo. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this airport. I'm just going to call it Hassan Airport. We're just going to have to live with that. That's what it's called now. It's now Hassan Airport. So the plan is to take off heading to the east and then we'll hook up at TE603 Waypoint and then we will just track due west. Now there is another little airport in here that we could have used as a stop off point but because we'll have the drop tanks we won't need it. So we'll overfly this airport and we'll continue heading west. And I, re I really don't want to do this uh, custom waypoint thing so I don't know why it's doing that there. But yes, this is going to be our arrival into Komodo. So we're going to go to the north a little bit and we're going to hook up at MD403 and work our way in to the airport. Now this airport is really well done, so I can't wait to show you that. That's going to be pretty awesome to take a look at. And why is my mouse acting up? Holy crap. I think because I'm recording this just close to Halloween, my mouse is probably possessed. But, provided of course we can make it through this, we are going to set our time to the afternoon because I want a sunset flight here. Uh, don't ask me what the heck is going on right now with my Microsoft Flight Simulator, but yeah, about that. We're going to set it for, uh, I don't want it to be 422. I want it to be a little bit earlier than that. So let's go with about 408-ish. That should give us enough daylight to get us in to Komodo. And once we get to Komodo, it should be just in time for a beautiful sunset where I can show you the airport. All right. So are you ready? Because I'm ready. Let's do this thing. Okay, so we are on board the Porter, and we've got a number of things that we need to do before we get started. So, I'm going to jump right in there. First of all, say hello to Kara. Hi, Kara. Kara's going to be handling all our comms today, as she typically does whenever there's two of us flying. And we are going to need this nifty little thing that Milviz has given us. This is what I call the iPad. They call it a tablet. It's an iPad. I don't care what anybody says. It's a freaking iPad. But we've got uh, three pages that we can look at here. So you'll see the first thing here, the configuration page. I'm just kind of zooming in so that you can see it. Remember, I am recording in VR and I'm using the Oculus Mirror. So standard disclaimer, when I talk, my head moves. Even though Oculus Mirror does have some form of motion smoothing in there, it is not perfect. So I don't know what to tell you other than pause the video if you want to take a look at everything that's there. All right. But as you can see on the left hand side, we've got uh, various items that we can click on to get rid of. So you will notice if I look out the window, we have a pedo tube cover. So we can go ahead and get that off. 
There we go. Propeller tie downs, we'll do the same for that. Intake cover, of course, we're going to need that off. And exhaust cover, we will need that off. Now, the next thing that we can do, we can go to the passenger slash cargo section. And these are a couple of options that were added in the recent update. So you could either set this up as a cargo aircraft or a passenger aircraft. We're going to keep it as cargo today because we are delivering some humanitarian supplies to Komodo. Or we could even set it up for skydiving, but I'm not sure if that's 100% implemented. Now, this right here is how we can add or remove cargo. So you'll see it says zero weight. And when we push it to the right-hand side, it actually starts adding cargo to our cabin. So we're going to set it like right about here, around 300 pounds. And you'll notice it even gives us a little picture here to tell us what is in the back. So there we go. We now have two boxes of fragile humanitarian supplies that we need to take to Komodo. Now, since we have them loaded up, we can also lock the door. So let's go ahead and clicky that. The other side also has a door that we can move. However, we won't need to worry about that just yet. All right, next order of business, the third section is the fuel. So as you can see, it remembered what I set in the um, aircraft selection. So we've got 73.1 gallons in both left and right wings. And then, of course, 54.4 in the external tanks. I love these external tanks. They remind me of like fighter jet drop tanks. They're so cool. They are so cool, especially with this funky livery here. All right, but that is everything that we needed to take a look at and set up in the iPad. So we'll go ahead and put that away. All right, now we can get started with the aircraft. And typically, I will just try to do everything from memory, but I want to do it sort of by the books. So to do that, we need to pop this open. Uh, Kara, let me just check you just to make sure that you are set to handle all the comms you are ai radio communications atc okay perfect uh we'll close that out and we'll go to checklist there is the checklist okay so i'm gonna put the checklist like right here and i really want to start with pre-flight inspection all right so i'm gonna close this out and we'll just go through this really quick here. I'll try to make this as quick as possible. So pedo cover, remove and stow. We've already done that. Exhaust covers done. Prop tie down done. Intake covers done. Chocks are also gone. So go ahead and click that. Before engine starting. Okay, doors closed and locked. Now, I'm leaving this door open for a reason. Because I want to show you a cool little effect that Milvis added to this thing that they really didn't need to do. But it's those little touches that makes an aircraft worth it. So we're going to check that as done. Control lock. Make sure it is released. Uh, it looks like it is. Yeah, we can definitely move the stick. So I'm going to go with yes on that. Flight controls free and correct. We just checked them. Parking brake set. The parking brake is this little red U-shaped thingy-mabobber over here. And it needs to be pulled out, I think it is. Yeah, pulled in is parking brake off pulled out is parking brake on so that is set power lever set to idle this is our power lever otherwise known as our throttle and as you can see it's already in idle we do have beta we do have reverse that we can use so that may come in handy on the landing i don't know this is a pretty long runway that we're heading to so we may or may not need to use it but either way it's where it needs to be idle control lever basically similar to the mixture but not exactly remember this is a turboprop so it operates different from your standard uh, GA aircraft however we do have it in the cutoff you'll notice a little red uh, flag or whatever that is that is currently pushed to the left indicating everything is shut down so it is where it needs to be all right propeller control lever is currently set to feather that is this right here obviously it is in feather so this is good and we're going to go with starter switch off. The starter switch and the ignition switches are both covered in the off position, which is fine. Ignition switch also covered. Generator switch is off. Aux fuel pump is off. All of these are located on this side here. 
Landing lights are off. Avionics bus switches. Those are under here. Bus one, bus two. Those are off. And avionics bus tie. Now, this is kind of difficult to see. Right now, it's pushed in. So if I click it, you'll see the little button pops out. That is where it should be for an engine to start. So go ahead and check that. Master battery, we will turn you on and wait for the caution and warning lights. All right, battery is on, but I'm not getting anything here. Uh, okay, well, it looks like everything did go where it needs to, with the exception of our ADI, so that's fine. Fuel valve open. This is your fuel cock right here. Do not forget to turn that on. Avionics bus one. Okay. We'll wait for the Garmin to pop up. So only this first one will come up when we have Avionics Bus 1 on. And, of course, it'll have all of our engine gauges there. G1000 power on sequence is done. Fuel quantity check. Uh, 85. Yep, we're good. Engine instruments check. We can't really check that because, well, the checklist is in the way, but they look okay to me. Uh, oil temperature. It's in the green, so that works. You can see it says 27. So as long as it's over minus 40 Celsius, we're good. All right, so we're pretty much ready for an engine start here. Okay, aux fuel pump switch. That is the first thing we need to turn on, so that is clearly not it. Uh, or is it? It is. Okay. This is kind of odd. I'll be glad when we actually have touch controller support in Microsoft Flight Simulator because that's a heck of a lot easier than seeing these icons for the mouse kind of change direction and whatnot. It's just off-putting to me, but that's a personal preference. Propeller area clear. I don't see any people, so we're going to go with yes on that one. But before we do anything else, one thing I will do is I will push us back a little. So parking brakes off, push back initiated. And we're going to go to the yellow line there. All right, right about there should be good. So push back, stop, parking brakes back on. Okay, now we know for sure that our propeller area is clear. Starter switch on. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to happen quickly, so I'm going to just check it all off, but I'm going to go through it with you. So, once we hit the starter switch, we're going to check the oil pressure is coming up, then we hit the ignition switch. When we get to NG12 minimum, we're going to throw the idle control lever, you'll remember, that's this guy here, into its uh, low idle, so basically out of where this little red stopper is. And then... We're going to monitor our temperature, make sure it doesn't get too high, and we'll make sure that everything is where it should be, and we'll turn the starter switch off and cage it, as well as the ignition switch. All right, you got it? Like I said, I'm just going to check all of this stuff off for now. There we go. And I'm actually going to move this, or closing it is fine, too. Okay. So we're ready for an engine start, and I want to call your attention to the door. So remember, it's in a full open position. So we hit starter on. Prop is starting to move. Oil pressure is coming up. Let's get the ignition switch on. We're waiting for 12 NG. We are already at 20, so we can go ahead and put this on. And there we go. And everything is going to start spinning up now. And take a look at the door. As the propeller gets faster, the door starts closing itself. I don't care who you are, that is too cool. Like I said, Milvis really did not have to do that. But it's just so neat. We will need to get our um, prop pitch up, however. So let's go ahead and put that all the way full. So it's no longer feathered. And look at that. It just did it all on its own. So now's a good time to close that. You'll notice that the noise changes. We'll leave the window open for now. All right, so cool beans. That is a very good engine start right there.
after engine start. Okay, propeller lever, pull forward. We already did that. Generator switch goes to on. That's you. Avionics bus 2 will go to on, and the avionics bus tie needs to go in. So, avionics bus 2, you are now on. Avionics bus tie in. Wait for this Garmin to pop up, and voila. So there you can see our very first waypoint after we take off. So we're going to go uh, runway heading and then intercept it to the right. Assuming, of course, they have us taking off on runway 9. Speaking of which, Kara, shouldn't you have told them that we're taking off on runway 9? Why are you not doing your job? Hmm. Kara and I are going to have to have a little talk in a bit here. All right, before taxi, make sure passengers are secure. We have no passengers. Our cargo is secure, however. Landing lights as needed, navigation lights on. Okay. I am going to go ahead and close this out because we're pretty much done with that. So the other things that we need, these are our nav lights. These are our beacon lights. And then we have our landing lights. Now watch this. When we turn the landing lights on, you can see the little spotlight right there, but we also need them to point forward. That's the stuff right there. I love little stuff like that. That's just so freaking awesome. All right. It says generator fail. Why is my generator failing? That is no bueno. Uh, generator, are you, are you doing your generatory things? Oh, we are drawing a lot of amps. Why are we drawing a lot of amps? I wonder. Hmm. Let's go gen reset. Got 25 volts, so we're a little low on battery because it's not charging that well, but uh, generator is no longer failing, I don't think. I'm going to turn these off here. Kill the generator, turn you back on, see what it does. I'm going to bring the throttle up a little here and see if that helps. Come on, generator. Do your generator -y goodness, please. I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, we're going to assume that the generator is, in fact, working. If it is not, this is going to be a really short flight. All right, we'll put that back down. Okay, so now that we've got uh, everything on, we will need to turn our starter switch off and our ignition off and then of course cage them. And that should help a little bit, I hope. Auxiliary fuel pump we can also turn off until we are ready for takeoff. Uh, landing light is on, still says battery discharge and gen fail. Oh boy. Well, this is going to be fun. All right, let's contact the tower anyway. Uh, we'll team ground. And we tell them we would like to depart west. Ground Belgium 70 ready to taxi west departure. Belgium 70 taxi to an old short of runway 09 are using taxiway. Okay. Contact tower on 122 decimal 4 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 09 or via taxiway Belgium 70. All right, well, that works. Thank you, Kara. I appreciate that. I'm a little bit concerned about what's going on with my ammeter here. It's now showing zero, and I don't know what's up with that. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to reset the gen. And we're going to turn the generator back on. Ah, there we go. There we go. Now it looks like we're doing something. Okay. Only one generator is functional. Well, we can fly on one generator, right? I sure as heck hope so. If not, this is going to be a short flight. Okay, let's set our altimeter. So, 2985, barometer is definitely dropping. 
which means we've probably got some storms along our way. However, we're going up to 10,000 feet, so let me go ahead and just set that right now. Technically 10,600, so 10,600. We're going to leave it there for right now. All right, but we are just about ready to taxi, so I'm going to get us to the hold short really quick here. And I guess we can probably go out that way, right? Since we need to go to that end of the runway. All right. Uh, prop pitch, are you full? You are full. Mixture is still at idle, or not mixture, but condition lever. We'll get the parking brakes off. Do a little turn here. So now this flight is supposed to take us approximately about an hour and a half. Now, that's a little longer than I would like for this video to be. So what I plan on doing is once we get to cruise, we will do our usual musical interlude and I'll put in some nifty little external camera shots. And then when we get close to top of descent, we'll pick it back up in the cockpit and then we can uh, bring her in to Komodo. So if that's all right with you, that is our plan for this particular video. And that should keep us around the one hour mark, which is actually where I like to be. Woo, gotta watch it with these brakes. All right, right here is good, parking brakes on. Kara, do I need to talk for you again? I guess I do. Tower Belgium 70 and runway 09 are ready for departure, west departure. We're not Belgium exactly there. Belgium 70, altimeter 29, decimal 85, wind calm, west departure approved. Okay, I'm good. Cleared for takeoff runway 09 or Belgio 70. Okay, well, Kara has done her part, so I need to make sure everything is set up here. So we're going to go CDI set to GPS. And I also want my heading bug to be set to uh, about 090, so runway heading. There we go. Other things that I need. Uh, transponder. We're going to set you to out. We'll back out of that. Uh, what did I just hit there? Nearest. I don't want nearest. PFD. I like to show the winds on this. Usually I'll go with option three. So that gives me a pretty good idea as to what kind of winds we're dealing with once we take off here. Okay, so transponder is squawking. Autopilot is pretty much ready to go. We just need to back taxi here. Oh, here's another thing that I can do. I can turn on a cockpit fan, which does add to the noise. So if you're having difficulty hearing me, that's why. I'll probably turn it off in a bit. The other important thing that we need to do, you see these little trim indications here? You'll notice the center one for rudder trim is not where it should be. So we need to put this all the way to the right. So right about there. That is of extreme importance in this aircraft. Because of the torque that you've got in this thing, you've got to have your rudder trim set all the way to the right. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put our little sun visor up because it's so cool. And we're ready to back taxi. Now, this is going to take us a while, so we'll go to the outside view as always, and we'll cut it, and we'll come back in once we are lined up and ready to go. Okay, so we are successfully lined up on runway 9, so we just need to do our final checks and then make sure everything is set to go. So we've already taken care of our trim, but we do need to take care of our flaps. So if you look, you see that tiny little flap gauge there? I'm pulling the lever down until it says take off. Right about there should do the trick. And we can confirm. Yep, I got flap there. Uh, Kara, I can't see past you. Oh, there we go. Okay, flaps are both down. This is good. This is what I like. 
All right, now's a good time to close this window here, so go ahead and do that. Perfect. And we should also get our auxiliary fuel pump on. That works. And let's see, what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. We're not worried about the condition lever just yet. We're going to pull that up momentarily. Uh, but yes, everything else should be good. Oh, let's get our panel lights on. There we go. All right, so that is on, that is on. I don't think I have any pedo heat, so it's not that that I'm missing. Uh, trim, I'm gonna trim us up slightly, so that way we'll take off a little easier. Oh, one thing I am gonna do, however, so those external tanks, these are the pumps for them. We can activate those. So there's the first one. And there's a second one. So what that'll do is that'll drain the external pods into the wing. So pretty much it should take us forever to start losing gas. You can see we're at 83 right there. All right, Clara, I hope you are ready because I am ready. Folks, I hope you are ready because it is time for breaks down. Throttles up. And we'll get our mixture up first. Wait for that to stabilize. Looking good. Throttle is in its full idle position now. Brakes off. Get ready to do the rudder tango. And we're going to pull our power lever up to about 85%. Oh, I should lock the tail wheel. There we go. Tail wheel is now locked. I should have done that before. Oh boy. Yep, the rudder tango. All right, we are safe to take off, so let's go ahead and do that. Yep, looking good, looking good. And we're just past 73 knots, so we'll get our flaps up. Very nice, very nice. And we can say goodbye to the airport, Hassan, whatever, whatever, airport. And we're just gonna continue following runway heading here. There we go. Very nice takeoff. I am quite pleased. All right, uh, Kara. Well, technically we're heading east right now, but that's because we need to intercept that waypoint down there. So we're going to stick on runway heading, and I'm going to hand fly this sucker. And I did notice um, whenever you have a flight plan, it now says time climb. But it also tells you what altitude you should be when you get there. So in this case, for this particular flight plan, roughly around 630 feet, which we just went past. So it should automatically direct us to the next waypoint momentarily, which of course you can see on that half of the G1000. So it's gonna be to our right. So as soon as it tells me to make that turn, I will of course do so. We're just waiting for that to happen, which should be any second now. Wind seemed to be blowing me out. Oh, there we go. Make a turn there. And we're just gonna try and hook up with this waypoint. We're still climbing. What's our rate of climb? 500 feet per minute, roughly. I'm okay with this. And we'll level out. A little bit to the right of where I need to be, so there we go. Right there is good. This thing is ridiculously easy to fly. It is so perfect as far as the flight model goes. It flies exactly how I would expect a Pilatus PC-6 Porter to fly, which is nothing short of amazing, let me just tell you. All right, so now we can set ourselves up on the proper course. See the little southern peninsula there below the town, or I guess technically city. And we're dipping down a little bit here. Added a little too much rudder. But there we go. We'll just line ourselves up properly. And now we can start using the autopilot. So, master AP on. You'll notice it automatically gives us a heading. So we want nav hold for this one. 
and let's set up our vertical velocity so we are looking at we'll go with about uh, 700 feet per minute oh, not eight seven there we go and we're still at 85 percent for our throttle We can also turn off our landing lights now, so turn you off and we'll pull them back in. Everything looks good to me. So remember, we're going up to 10,000 feet. So yeah, that should be pretty good. Should get us over the clouds. And there we can see the airport and the thunderstorm off in the distance. Don't mind me, Kara. I'm not being creepy. I just want to check out the airport. It is, of course, default. I could not find an add-on airport for this, so eh, we make do with what we got. All right, Kara, do your job. Let me check the cargo. Now, an interesting little thing. Oh, I'll wait till she's finished. Ooh. 2133, tree, tree. let's see if it changes. There it is. Well, all right. Okay, and now that I've got sun in my eye, maybe I should pull this back down, huh? It is no help at all. <laughs> all right, well, we, we can live with it. Okay, so what I was going to tell you, another uh, interesting little thing about this. You'll notice that the cargo is sitting on another little central portion there. Let's say your cargo was less than legal, shall we put it. There is the capability to drop your cargo through a little trap door in the floor. Now, of course, we're carrying humanitarian supplies, so we definitely don't want to do that. The people of Komodo are counting on us to bring these human humanitarian supplies in, so we won't need to drop them out. But keep that in mind, you know, just in case you're doing some you know, less than legal missions there. It might come in handy for you. That's about all I will say about that. All right, let's see how we're doing on the gauges here. So we are at just shy of 3,500 feet on our way up to 10,000. Speed roughly around 101 knots. And what does that translate to in ground speed? 109. That must mean we've got a tailwind. Eh, one knot tailwind. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. Alright, so we've got about 18 nautical miles to go to get to our next waypoint, TB40. And actually, I would like to track us at least to the VOR that I know we need to pass. Okay, so first things first, we'll get the flight plan on. And I know it's really difficult to see, trust me, it's difficult for me to see in real life as well. But the next waypoint, BJW, that is actually the VOR over that airport that I showed you on the world map. So what we can do... We can see if we can locate the frequency for that. All right, I'm gonna set this to nearest. There we go, nearest airports. I want nearest VOR. We'll give it a second to refresh. There we go, BJW happens to be the first one that pops up. You can see the uh, bearing and the distance, 32 miles. <coughs> you can also see its elevation as well as its geolocation, as it were, and also, most important part, the frequency, 113.5. So that is what I'm looking for. So we're going to go to the PFD side, and you'll notice I've got this one highlighted here, 113.9. We just need to change it to 113.5, and we need to swap frequencies. So 113.5 is now being tracked. And we can add that to this. So we can set bearing one and bearing two. And of course, you'll notice it gives us little blue needles. We are now tracking to that V 
V-O-R. Now we're still following the GPS course, mind you, but it just happens to be in the same direction, slightly. The waypoint is a little bit offset, so once we hit that waypoint, we will guide ourselves directly to where we need to go. But that's how you do that, just in case you were curious as to uh, how to make that happen on a G-1000. There you go. All right, let me set my heading really quick here. We're at, what, 281? There we go, 281. We'll change that, of course, as we get a little bit further out. Yeah, look at this beautiful island. Oh my God, this is incredible. Of course, you know this is all default stuff. There is no additional add-on for the terrain mesh. This is all Microsoft Flight Simulator doing Microsoft Flight Simulator things. The only thing that I have added to this has been those trees. Remember I told you about the Four Season Pack in the P-38 video? And actually we saw it, I believe, first with the uh, chill video that I did with the Robinson R-44 around Pittsburgh. That's still in there. I did have to set it to the summer pack because I noticed that it was depicting autumn colored trees in Indonesia. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right at all. So I swapped it out for summer and as you can see it does look really good. It looks pretty impressive. Alright, let's see what we're looking at here. Our speed is starting to drop off so let's change our VS. We're at 700 now. I'm going to set us back down to 400 feet per minute. And that should give us back our lost speed. We'll check the engines while we're at it. Torque is looking good. Temperature is stable. NP is at 2000. That, I believe, is our prop pitch or RPM. And NG is at, what is that, 92? Wow. Oil's looking good, pressure and temperature. Ameter is still acting a little funky. We've only got one side going, so I'm not sure what's up with the other side. I thought this thing only had one generator, but it turns out it might have two. I'll have to consult the manual on that. And voltage, batteries back up to 28. Fuel quantity, we're at 82, so it is still draining from those little fuel pods that we've got on the wings, which is so awesome. Okay, so we're still about halfway to our cruise altitude, which is fine. I am going to go to the outside view, but this will not be a musical interlude just yet. I just want to get a good view as to what's going on out there. Wow, that just looks incredible. See, I'm not 100% certain if this is considered satellite photo or if this is geotypical textures, which is pretty much where uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator substitutes its own textures in there for the terrain. Either way, it does look pretty impressive. So I gotta give them kudos on that. Considering how remote this part of the world is, I would say they did a pretty damn good job. Look at those mountains over there too. Wow, that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. 
I haven't seen too many texture glitches, but every now and then they do seem to pop up. I'm starting to wonder if they may be related to my graphics card and whatever temperature it's functioning at. Because as you know, graphics cards do tend to get hot. So I've actually got the AC going right now on my feet to keep the computer cool. And hopefully that will help with the graphics card as well and minimize any texture issues that we may be having. All right, so we are at just about 8,000 feet, so 2,600 to go until we reach our target altitude. And I think we're pretty much done with this over here, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back to map. And we should probably zoom this out as well, too. All right, so there you can see the VOR that we're actually tracking to. There's an airport under there. And like I said, we could have used that airport as a stopping off point, but kind of didn't want to do that. So we'll show it in the little external cinematic once we get close to it. But for the time being, we're just going to keep gaining in altitude until we get to where we need to be. How are we doing on speed? Indicated at 104. And true airspeed is now 127. Ooh, our tailwind picked up. Seven knot tailwind and a bit of a crosswind component. Not too shabby. I can work with this. All right. And it looks like we are about ready to switch to the next waypoint. Yep, BJW, 14 miles away. So let me adjust my heading bug because I always like to have that lined up where it should be. So we should be tracking, what, 288, roughly? Well, it says 291, because it's counting for crosswinds, so we'll just set that up. But that works. That works. All right. So once again, we'll take a look at this nifty little mountain that they've got growing here. This is cool. And especially in VR, this is exactly the reason why we fly in flight sims that's just gorgeous I have no idea what the name of that mountain is if I remember I will put it in a pop-up commentary below but that's just gorgeous it almost has like a Mount Fuji feel to it you can see there's even little snow up there Wow it's really cool not so keen on this lightning that's uh going on down there though I really hope that we won't have to deal with that once we get to Komodo but I guess we'll find out later all right so as you can see we still have a pretty long ways to go and I promised you that we would do a musical interlude we are almost at cruise so once we get to cruise I will go ahead and uh, switch to the outside view start the song it's just gonna be the regular FSX music. I don't feel like sharing any of my past band's music this time, uh, so we'll just do the usual stuff that we would do. But we will get there in a moment. Let me just check everything one more time. Still a little concerned about that amateur, but hey, it still seems to be doing what it's supposed to do, so you know what? I'm not going to concern myself with that. Everything else appears to be in order. Don't believe my engine is in danger of blowing up, so that is the most important thing there. And we still have a little ways to go to get there. Man, that's just so cool. Look at that mountain! Sometimes, this flight sim really does amaze me when it gets it right it is truly a sight to behold that's pretty cool and this folks is exactly why I like flying areas of the world that most people don't even think of flying you see some of the most amazing sights it's so worth it I would highly recommend you fly Indonesia Papua New Guinea uh, East Timor, whatever they're calling the other half of that island, 
New Caledonia, New Britain, Solomon Islands, all those areas. Fly them all. Because this is the kind of scenery that awaits you. And it's just so freaking perfect. And this is like the best plane to sightsee it with. We're not going too, too fast. We're not going too, too slow. And granted, since we've got a G1000, you know, we've got all the information that we could ever possibly need. But yeah, this aircraft is just perfect for touring like this. Or in our case, carrying humanitarian supplies. That's what we're going to go with. That is what we're going to go with. Right, Kara? That is our cover story if anyone asks us anything. All right, so we got a little river down there. That looks cool. We should be just about getting ready to level out now. Yep, we're at 10,600 feet to go. Now, it is important to note this aircraft does not have oxygen, or at least not that I've been able to see. And I do not believe this aircraft is pressurized either. So that is a thing. Granted, we are in a flight sim, so we don't really need to worry about stuff like that. But I have heard on very good authority that when we get the... Um, Reno Air Race add-on and of course uh, Sim Update 7 we will have things like blackout and redout which you know those are caused by g-forces however that also tells me that they should be able to implement things like, like hypoxia and the P-38 that I showed you before I know currently they do not have hypoxia modeled but if they're bringing blackout and redout I'm pretty sure that flying iron simulations will find a way to implement that and I would like to see all developers implement that if your oxygen or your pressurization is not set correctly you should black out after a little while but we should be fine at 10,000 feet I mean if I were doing this in real life I'd be a little bit lightheaded however since we're in a sim this will do this will do nicely all right, so since we are finally pretty much at our cruise altitude, now would be an excellent time for us to go to the outside view and do our musical interlude. It looks like we're getting kind of close to the airport as well. So I will see you all when we reach top of descent.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed our little musical interlude at cruise there. And as you can see, the sun is starting to reach that golden hour where the clouds really start to take on some character and life of their own. We are actually getting close to our final destination. We still have a little ways to go, but we've got ooh, about uh, 32 and a half miles till we reach uh, MD40 which I believe is where we need to make our turnaround. We can check that, of course, by zooming this out a bit. Okay, that's a bit much, but yes, that kind of gives us the idea as to where we're headed. Now, since we know that it's going to become a little bit more flat where we're heading, we can start descending somewhat. I'm thinking pattern altitude should probably be around 2,000-ish feet. I don't know for sure, because of course I did not look up like any charts or anything for this, but we're going to start bringing her down. I'm thinking maybe about 2,500 should be good and safe for us. And since we still have a couple of mountains in the way here, we can probably start a very gentle descent. And then we'll work our way down and make it a little bit steeper. So, to do that, I am going to hit the VS. And we're going to start adjusting. 400 feet per minute should be good. Now, of course, our engine speed will increase considerably. So, I'm going to pull the throttle back just a bit. Let's see, what do we have there? Uh, it says it's about 86. Basically, I'm trying to keep our speed roughly the same. So we were at about, what, 114 knots. That's indicated 143 with the, with the uh, tailwind. That works for me. That should get us there in good time. It says about 11 minutes and 50 seconds time we should be down. We'll also check our barometer. 29.84. Okay, so it dropped one more point. But look at that. Oh yeah, this is what I live for. This is what I live for. I'm not so keen on all this lightning because it looks like it's a little bit over where we're going to need to come in to land. But I think we should still be able to pull it off though. The sky just looks magnificent. Now, as great as this looks, I do have to say DCS still has done it better. There's just something about the DCS clouds, even though they're not dynamic at the moment, that just really wows me incredibly. These are good. These are very good. But I think the pixelation issues kind of takes away from it a little bit. And I'm hoping that uh, Asobo will work on that at some point in time and make it look a little bit more phenomenal. But right now, DCS is the current king when it comes to the texture, the graininess, and the overall feel of the clouds themselves. Of course, DCS, Eagle Dynamics, you know what work you need to do. You need to make those suckers dynamic. But yeah, really good stuff. Everything just looks wonderful though. So I'm not complaining too much here. All right, so we are at 9,000. We've got about 24 miles to go to get to where we need to be. Uh, I'm thinking we're probably going to need to dip down a little bit more. So let's set you for 700 feet per minute, shall we go? Yeah, let's do that. Of course, we will need to drop the throttle some more. Now, I did not turn off my auxiliary fuel pump because, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% certain if I need to turn it off while these transfer pumps are going. And it's really not hurting anything. It's not like we're drastically increasing our fuel flow by having them on. So, we should be fine with that. Alright, let me pull the throttle back some more here. So I'm at about 50% uh, throttle throw. All right, Kara, you got this? Going to 122.7 She's got it. Approach 
All right, good deal. Had to get some water there. Okay, so the actual flight plan that I have here really can't see it all that well. So I am going to close that out altogether. We could put it up on this one, and it's a little bit bigger. Not by much, but it will at least tell you that we've got one waypoint until we get to Komodo Airport. So that's kind of what we expected. So we are exactly where we need to be. And you will also notice that we do have a nav aid there. So if we wanted to, we could put that in our nav one. I'll need to figure out what it is though. So let's go, what do we want? Nearest, nearest VOR. Let's see, 18 miles away, 19 miles away. What heading? I'm looking at LBJ, so that is this one here. Oh, nope, too far, too far. Oh, it's jumping. Oh, I see what it's doing here. All right, there we go. LBJ, that's what I'm looking for. That, I believe, is right at our airport. So what's the frequency on that? 112.60. All right, that works. I can deal with that. All right, G1000, thank you. That's what I need. 112.6 is what we're looking for. So we'll change this one since we're already there. 112.6 will make you the active. And let's see what it says. LBJ is 16 miles almost directly ahead. Now remember, we are coming down to a waypoint that will allow us to line up for approach, but we don't quite know which runway we're coming in on yet. I'm just kind of guesstimating here. So Kara, I would actually like you, even though we're still kind of high up, to tell them that we're coming in to land nearest airport list mutiara is that mutiara 2 i don't even know but that's where we're going tower bell geode 70 is 15 miles east 7500 feet with oscar to land bell geode 70 tower altimeter 29 or decimal 8 tree wind calm enter right down wind runway 17 runway 17 okay so that means we need to head south We're going to go ahead and set up our heading bug for 170 roughly. All right, right there should be good. So that tells me that I did guess correctly. We're coming down exactly where we need to. I like it. All right, let's go ahead and get out of this. Oh, I'm doing the wrong things again. Okay, let's go bam, bam, bam. And that should clear itself up. All right, and now we can zoom in to this. And we can actually see where we're going. Cool beans. All right, I'm gonna pull the throttle back a little bit more because I have a feeling we're coming down way faster than I would like. And speaking of descent, we're probably gonna need to come down a little steeper. So let's go uh, what do you think? About a thousand feet per minute should do the trick. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to idle the throttle for this here. All right, and we have 12 miles to go to get to that waypoint. So this is going to happen fast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put our landing lights back out. So landing lights on and extended. Check the alerts, nothing on the alerts. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn off these pumps because we've got more than enough gas to make it safely to Komodo. So we can draw from the wing tanks now. But there you go. Excellent having these little fuel pods with us. They came in really handy, even though we technically didn't need them. We had enough gas for this, but I just wanted to kind of show them off to you. All right, looks like we are starting to get into the airspace and we are heading to that little peninsula that you're seeing right where the flight director's pointing. That's gonna be our waypoint. Now, once we reach there, 
I will go ahead and take us off of autopilot and we'll come in manually here. But while we're in this descent, how about we go back to the outside view really quick and check out this awful sunset. Or did I just call it awful? No, it's not awful. It's awesome. Wow. Sometimes my brain goes in reverse. All right, so now that we're coming down rather sprightly, uh, we can go ahead and change our descent rate once more. So we'll pull ourselves back up a little bit here. Uh, 700 feet per minute should be good. Still have a little ways to go, about six miles exactly. You can see the peninsula there, so the airport is going to be right over there. And now that I'm thinking about it, we may need to come down a little bit more, so let's go ahead and adjust that. Uh, 1,800 feet, maybe? All right, thank you. Clear to land runway 17, Bell Geo 70. Okay, uh, I have no idea where this airport is, but we are going to let our... GPS do its thing. I'm going to pull us back all the way on the throttle here because, of course, we will need to have the flaps out at some point in time. We're at 3,000 feet right now and about four miles to go till we hit the waypoint. So what I think I will do is I will let the autopilot kind of stabilize us at about 1,500 feet. So that means, of course, that I'm going to need to lower us just a little bit more. There we go, 1500 should do the trick. And that's going to be our approach altitude. And then we'll work on all the fun stuff, like getting the flaps down and making sure we're properly trimmed, which it looks like we already are, so I'm not going to worry about that. I will, however, turn the cockpit fan off. And that will lower a little bit of the noise in here. Alrighty, folks, I hope you are buckled up because next stop is going to be Komodo, and I think you can see it right there. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We're still a little high up here. Maybe I should take it off of autopilot from now, so let's go ahead and do that. Autopilot off. Okay, autopilot. Why are you still on? I don't want you on. I want you off. There we go. Alright. Throttle all the way to idle. And now we can get some flappage going. So let's go ahead and pull the flaps down. We probably won't need full flaps for this, so I'm just going to set it to take off flaps right now. As you can see, the airport is coming up rather quickly, so yeah, this is going to be a fun landing. Not going to lie. And of course, you can hear the wind. It's interesting. I'm pretty sure I hear the same whistle like I hear with a Corsair. I don't know if I'm imagining things or if you all can hear it too. But it definitely does sound like the Corsair whistle. Alright, we're at 
1,200 feet. Where is that runway? Uh, we're still a little high. Let's continue bringing her down. All right, I'm waiting for the GPS line to turn. 0.3 nautical miles. Okay, well, you should be getting me to where I need to go. There it is. And look at that. Oh, that was so worth waiting for. And we're still high. We're still off center. Make sure the tail wheel is locked. You can't really see it, but there it is down there. And I'm going to pull the throttle back so we can lose a little bit more altitude. Everything is full. Ox fuel pump is on. Flaps are set. All I need is that glide slope. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Let's start pulling this back up. Perfect. Right there. Hold it right there. And folks, welcome to Komodo Airport. Woohoo! Now, this is a pretty long runway, so I don't think I will need to put this aircraft into its uh, reverse thrust. Or its beta, as it's more properly called. But we're going to see if we can float her on the runway anyway. Let's do a quick check outside. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and bring her in. We'll aim for the touchdown zone right about there. And she's probably going to bounce. Oh, not bad, not bad. Okay. And we're out of trim. Why are we out of trim? That's what that uh, thing is for there. All right. There we go. Oh, boy. Got to do the rudder tango again. Very light touch on the rudder. Try not to go too crazy with it. See, this is where we need it in beta. This is what beta helps to prevent. So it'll help us slow down a bit. What we can do, however, is drop our mixture levels. Well, it's not really mixture, but you know what it is. Not my best landing in this bird. However, I'm kind of okay with it. All right, we're working on it. I'm trying to stop first. I figured I would use the entire runway just to make the taxi back even better. All right, let's unlock our tail wheel before we go off the runway here. And like I said, welcome to Komodo on a beautiful, rosy evening. That's just awesome. Does it get any better than this, folks? I really don't think it does. Really don't think it does. All right, Kara, do your thing, please. Very nice. Thank you. All right, flaps up. And we're still not going to contact ground. But that's okay. Because we made it safely to Komodo. Like I said, my landing was not perfect. Not in the least. But hey, we did make it in. So I'm at least grateful for that. And I'm extremely grateful that you all were able to come with me. This was a picture perfect flight. And I can't think of a better aircraft to have done this flight in than the Milvis PC-6 Porter. This aircraft is just incredible. If you have not yet picked it up, I am going to highly recommend that you do. It is so worth it. It is so worth it. Alright, so we're going to park over by the airport. I don't see our guys here, so I'm going to like designate a spot. 
And I will remind you, this airport is from Aerosoft. There it is, Komodo Airport. So yeah, again, I would definitely recommend that you pick this one up. Obviously, it's more geared towards like commercial planes and whatnot, but you know what? Even for our PC-6 Porter with our humanitarian supplies on board, this airport is definitely a welcome sight, especially with that cloud behind it. That just looks incredible. All right, so right about here should be good. And look at that, there's even moving people here. Oh my God, I never noticed that before. That's too cool. Okay, so when we do our little ending video here, our little montage for the closing credits, we're gonna take a look at this airport. That is so awesome. All right, so with that having been said, thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode, and I have been flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And look, there's a little Komodo dragon on the glass. That's so cool. That is so cool. All right, we'll take a quick look at that once we go outside. But just to remind you, uh, this is the Milviz PC-6 Porter, the Pilatus PC-6 Porter. It is in phase one or stage one. Uh, phase two will be coming at some point in time in the near future. And once we have that, I'll probably do like a chill video to update it there. Just to remind you that the uh, airport that we have come into is Aerosoft Komodo Airport. And as you can see, it definitely looks really good. Everything else has been default. So if you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And we'll be back with some more Microsoft Flight Simulator goodness at some point in time in the near future. Until then, we'll take a look at this ridiculous thing that Asobo really seriously needs to do something about. Oy. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, you know what, I'm done. Thanks again for watching. Ciao.